In order to think about the future, we're going to start in the past. This is 500 years ago when Gutenberg figured out how to take a great press and turn it, add movable type, and turn it into something that would reproduce books. Science and technology have been linked for at least the last five centuries because Gutenberg gave us a different way to communicate that hadn't existed before. And there were a lot of innovations that came out of Gutenberg's invention that were important to science. Not all those innovations are technological. Some of them are cultural. I'm going to give you one. One of those innovations was the idea of plagiarism. So I put, pulled up the uh, definition of plagiarism here, the practice of taking someone else's work or ideas and passing them off as one's own. The interesting thing is that plagiarism didn't exist in the English language until 200 years after the invention of the printing press. It was because before the printing press, the way that you made a copy of a book or a manuscript was to copy it over by hand. It wasn't called plagiarism, it was called publishing. So after the printing press made uh, printing or publishing uh, less expensive, plagiarism became a problem and we had to invent an ethical concept to deal with that. And sure enough, uh, the origin is right next to the definition. It comes from, uh, according to this uh, source, the Latin plagiarist to kidnap. You're kidnapping somebody else's ideas. You're either holding them hostage or you're presenting them uh, as your own. Well, it wasn't long in our uh, recent past that the cost of publication came down yet again and by orders of magnitude. So the Chronicle of Higher Education ran this article. I've seen this also in uh, author instructions. For example, Environmental Science and Technology includes this term self-plagiarism in their author instructions. And I think this is, this is sort of an extrapolation of the ethical concept that resulted from the printing press into something that now looks ridiculous. As if you were gonna kidnap your own idea and ransom yourself to release it into the world. But sure enough, this idea of self-plagiarism has taken root in some circles. That you could um, reuse your own work, publish it again in some other venue. Not that it was someone else's idea, but who are you cheating here? You're, uh, according to this, you're cheating either the grading system or you're cheating the publisher who owns the copyright. And a number of the uh, conversations that were happening via email uh, leading up to our proceedings were about this idea of how how do we publish in this 21st century where the marginal cost is essentially zero? It used to be that we would publish in one journal at one time, and it was so expensive to publish that everyone else had to have access or at least was obliged to reference that journal instead of reproducing the work. But we can now reproduce the work so inexpensively that the same idea or different versions of the document can be published several times. This is an ethical or extension of an ethical concept to try and push against that. So here what I'm saying is that the practices in science that have held for hundreds of years are being challenged by changes in technology and the social norms around those changes in technology are still evolving. The questions that I get particularly from students, is this okay, can I do this, are about those evolving social norms. Science, as we understand it right now, was was founded, sorry, uh, evolved in concert with the Industrial Revolution to both serve and guide the Industrial Revolution. And the Industrial Revolution gave us this. This is a diagram of Moore's Law that shows how many transistors we can fit on a chip. And it is Moore's Law that is an illustration of the information revolution. So I submit to you that the Industrial Revolution has within it the seeds of its own demise. We are now living in this age of science for the information revolution. I thought this was pretty hilarious. I got this off the winnower.com. They've got the Darwin selfie because they're trying to um, give us the sense that science must adapt the fittest technology, so to speak, the, um, the fittest practices are those that are likely to grow and thrive. So they've said, they founded the Winner, Winnower as an online science publishing platform that will be open. Uh, even the peer reviews uh, are not anonymous. So everyone can see the work and they can see the reviews. There will be pre and post publication review. In general, the Winnower illustrates this trend from the left to the right from a science that is closed to a science that is open, a science that is opaque to a science that is transparent and inclusive even of citizen scientists, from hierarchical organizations to more egalitarian, from static to dynamic. That is the version of the paper that appeared in science and then was six months later retracted. 
will no longer be sort of the uh, version of the paper that is archival. The increasingly scientific publications will be living documents that adapt to new knowledge and new context. Science again will go from stat uh, individualistic to collaborative and from centered to networked. That's my idea of the future of science. 